All right, so yeah, so this is gonna be the first time I'm looking at a type Lumina Melty Blood, but uh, I used to play this game a little casually back in the day uh, with my brother because we played like every fighting game, right? So I'm gonna be looking at trying to go for through the tutorial just because I want to start uh, with the with the base knowledge, and then I'm gonna go through the characters that I used to play when I was a casual, which were Shiki. Uh, I played Tono. Uh, I think I played like half move Tono. I could be wrong though. It's been a really long time. Uh, and I also played Roa, which I mean. See roll all day, of course. It's it's pretty clear, right? <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna be getting into the, uh, some of those mission modes as well, and then after that, I'm gonna be a little too antsy to uh, to just sit around and do missions, right? I'm gonna try to jump into some games if I can. So yeah, we're gonna start with just the basics. I know it's a little weird, but I like to at least know what's going on. She got such an interesting <laughs> walk forward. This looks so weird to me. I don't know why that looks so weird to me. So holding back or down back is you know the thing. So so when you hold back. It's standing blocking, right? When you hold down back, it's crouch blocking, so it blocks lows and highs. Also, that move used to be a standing low in for CL in previous games, I'm pretty sure. Ah, whoa, okay, all right, so <laughs> we're, we're just starting out and I'm already like getting freaked out. So throwing this game is A plus D, and all right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it, you guys are gonna see this for me. Every anime game has like a different throw button, so I'm super glad that it's just A plus D for this game because now I can I can just I can be like, all right, I'm playing Grand Blue Fantasy Versus or I'm playing Under Night and Birth, right? For throws, it'll 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 be so much easier for me to remember. <laughs> God, I like her throw. She just ragdolls you. <laughs> Rapid beat is oh, is this the the auto combo? Is Rapid beat auto combo? Okay, and then during a vertical jump, so this is the in some games they call it like drift. I guess. You'll notice it here, like how I kind of drift a little bit to the side, forward or back. All right, here we go. All right, the nitty gritty, the shield system. It's a little different, this game. I'm sorry, I'm really gigging to this training mode music. <laughs> so this is a bit different than previous uh, Belty games because of the, the stuff you can do after shield, right? Oh gotcha, I didn't realize- I thought she was gonna do a regular attack. But that makes sense that they would want me to just hold it, right? To see what shield does. Rather than like tap shield versus an attack. Standing shield while standing, you can't nullify overhead attacks with crouching seal shield. So rely on a standing shield when your opponent is in the air, your opponent will come close and perform a jumping attack. I like how they tried to tell you, like, hey, this is what this is what the CPU is gonna do. Don't don't mess up, and then I still mess up anyway. <laughs> And then here's aerial shield. Okay. So your opponent will come close and perform ground attacks. So jump to nullify him with air shield. Oh, does this, so does air shield um, stop air unblockables? Okay. Ah, here it is, the shield counter. Yeah, this is this is what everybody's been making Twitter clips of all night. <laughs> all right, so enter A or C for combo skills. B to perform a surprise attack from behind or B plus C to use a moon icon for an invincible rush attack. So they'll probably have me use all of them. So we're gonna do A first, and then B next. Okay, B plus C. Nice. Press AB plus C uh, with at least one full gauge of magic circuit will activate a force release. Using a ball magic circuit gives you a heat mode power up and will retrieve your life gauge. You can activate force release while you are guarding an attack. Recovering life using force release is very important. So you just hit ABC. You get your burst. All right, so recovery. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's just, it's hold the tech. Thank you. Thank you for hold to tech. You hold a button, you attack, and you're invincible while attacking. You can also attack a particular direction uh, by just holding one. This is so funky, bro. <laughs> Can't stop. <laughs> okay, you can alter attacks by holding a button. It's called a blowback edge, which change the nature of an attack's damage and effects. The attacks you can perform uh, blowback edge will vary by character. Oh yeah, yeah. So these are basically just like, uh, for example, with a uh, Roa Sokudaro, is you can hold it down and it cancels instead of actually coming out. And then high jump, yes, super jump. So like you can go regular high jump, right? Or you can go. High jump while in midair. So you can jump and then do the high jump input and you get it there. So area recovery, continuously press A, B, or C to perform an area recovery or uh, ground recovery. Depending on if you're airborne or on ground, uh, when recovery becomes available. If you continuously press D, you will perform a ground recovery and not an area recovery. Do they mean after getting knocked down? Aerial maneuvers, you can instead go to trade with D if you want to. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah, all right, I get it now. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I held shield instinctively. That's 
Moon skills are powerful attacks that can be employed by consuming moon icons. They can be employed by pressing B plus C at the same time as the directional buttons. Oh, is this, um, this is easy input, uh, specials. It, right? No, they're not. Cause, because it says with simpler commands than regular special attacks, uh, they're also even more powerful than regular special. Oh, 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 it's just the, it's the simple EX, right? Well, I guess I can't say simple EX, but, uh, Okay, that's really interesting. So it's not EX, but it's EXs that use the moon bar. And so B plus C when your moon icon is 50% or more, we'll use the icon and give you a moon drive mode power up. In the state, your moon skill gets a power up and will gradually fill your magic circuit. Activating moon drive leaves no openings. And you can move at the same time as your opponent. Okay, so you're, you're, there is zero recovery is what they mean. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about somebody like pressing a button right after you've activated moon drive and then you getting punished for activating moon drive. So, it is a veritable pause button. So when you activate Moon Drive, the Moon Icon will turn red. You can jump, air dash, and aerial back dash uh, one additional time. Oh, okay. So you can triple jump or uh, double jump air dash. So aerial back dash and aerial uh, forward dash can both only be used one time each while jumping. So you can't do double forward air dash. It's like you can't do some milia mix up off of it basically. <laughs> Uh, or you can't do the like, well, you can do this is you can you can cross over somebody in the air dash back and get the same side mix up that kind of thing uh, that you can't use aerial da back dash uh, aerial dash or aerial guard after a triple jump. So, OK, so you can only do double jump then air dash like I was saying earlier. OK, so we activate moon drive. So that's that's a lot of movement. <laughs> Oh man, I, I can see myself having a lot of fun with doing mix-ups off of that, for sure. All right, so entering Moon Drive, uh, the opponent performs a move drive uh, on you while your Moon Icon is 50% or more. We'll use the Icon and activate Moon Drive Counter. This allows a transition into Moon Drive without openings by canceling your previous action. Okay, so our crew's 236A, A, 4A is a combo that leads to an opening. The opponent will activate Moon Drive the moment you create an opening, so make up for the opening with a Moon Drive counter. That's gonna be really hard for me to do mid-game. Uh, cause me, me personally, right? Like, I just have not the best reactions. So holding down A plus B will start a Moon Charge. Doing this will increase your Moon Icon and Magic Circuit Gauges. Doing so will increase- Oh, wow. So you can still charge in this game? <laughs> no, we're hitting retry. Please, please look at this. This is adorable. This is. Oh god, I love it. Oh goodness. Charge! Uh, an arc drive is an extremely powerful special. Oh yeah, yeah. So this would be the closest thing to an actual super. Uh, for those of you who've played like other games. A last arc is the strongest version of a special attack. Activate with A plus B plus C plus D when you have four full gauges. Deals massive damage and it's the perfect ace to keep up your sleep. Yeah, this does like over half life like raw, right? Oh, <laughs> it stopped before I could even see how much damage it did. Our crew put you in gamer jail for her last arc. <laughs> you're gonna play Fortnite in here and you're gonna like it. <laughs> a force release with A plus B uh, plus C when you have four full gauges will put you in a blood heat. A last arc uh, can be activated when you shield successfully. Oh yeah, I've seen this before. I've seen people try to last arc off of shields and stuff, so. But Super arm is a state where you do not get knocked back after getting hit by an attack. I don't know if you've used a skill with a super armor, as an announcement won't be displayed. That's really nice. Because it tells you that there's armor. No moves that armor break, though. Yeah, we need to know these, because now we don't even know how to deal with armor. So, well done, French bread. Uh, armor break lets you apply regular hit effects to the opponent in a super armored state. Throws, EX specials, arc drives, last arcs, and shield counters are the main skills that can armor break. If you counter hit an opponent in the air, it becomes a fatal counter that drives your opponent back or sends them flying for a long time. Fatal counters also activate when delivering an attack that can't be nullified by a shield. Fatal counters are a great chance to deal additional damage to your opponent. When your opponent approaches and you think they'll hit you with a jump attack, try using a jump A fatal counter and deal additional damage. Okay. Oh, so I, I'm hitting, okay, so you do this, then crouch C. Okay, got it. They want me to combo it. There we go. That's all. Okay, so when your attack collides with that of your opponents, it re results in neutralization. 
most players are gonna players commentators any FGC folk is gonna call this a clash it's just that's just how it's normally called Scream will momentarily go dark and both attacks will disappear the neutralized attack can be cancelled as if it was guarded try using a standing C against the opponent's standing C and check to see if it gets neutralized yeah, ah, too early yeah. hell yeah <laughs> dang it <laughs> Setting up a clash is really hard. <laughs> yeah. Alright, chip damage. So, special immune skills uh, still deal a small amount of damage, even if it's against, uh, guarded against. Excuse me. This is known as chip damage. Beware that chip damage cannot land the fatal blow. Okay, so, that's good to know. You cannot kill with chip in this game. Hitting an opponent who is knocked down is called a knockdown attack. Can be useful for dealing damage uh, to opponents who didn't use recovery, but should be careful as the opponent can immediately use ground recovery after the attack. Interesting. Okay. Whiff cancel. An A can be cancelled as if it was guarded, even if it misses. This is called a whiff cancel. You can use whiff cancel to quickly input AA and perform. Oh no. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Oh, I'm having flashbacks from Dragon Ball Fighters. Oh, God. I'm so upset. <laughs> Here comes Bardock. <laughs> oh. Alright. Here we go. It is also possible to whiff cancel a special. No. Why? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's gonna be fine. Maybe it's not as bad as in Dragon Ball. In, you know, the, the, the normals in Dragon Ball, they have they have larger hitboxes, you know, because the game is a little bit different. So, so it might not be as bad, you know? This is why God invented shield. Oh my God, Johnson, you're right. I think you might have dispelled like all of my fears in a, in a moment, actually. See, see? See, I was I was worried, and then I was like, wait, it might not be as bad as Dragon Ball Fighters because there might be options to stop it. Everything's okay. We can breathe. <laughs> You're able to throw tech while shielding. Throws are very effective against shielding. In addition, just as with guarding, standing shields do not protect from low attacks, and crouching shields do not protect from overhead attacks. If your opponent is using your crouching shield, aim to get them with a throw or a jump attack. So there are certain defensive and offensive tactics after a shield has been uh, has made attacking ineffective. You can cancel an attack made ineffective uh, and shield by pressing the D button, which will allow you to prepare for your opponent's shield counter. Use the C attack against your opponent when they shield, and then try making the shield ineffective with shield counter A. Sorry, see so you. Okay, yeah, yeah, there are several defensive attacks that can be selected from the shield counter as well. Since shielding cannot defend against attacks from behind, shield counter B is effective against opponents who are employing shield counter A or C. Use shield to make your opponent's attack uh, ineffective, and when they use shield after that, strike back with shield counter B. Okay, so... Oh, so that's the counterplay? Oh, okay. Powerful defensive tactic that can be used after shielding is also shield counter B plus C, which is the moon skill. Uh, that you can do that they showed us at the very beginning uh, shield counters B plus B C can also be used when a shield has made attacking ineffective You can take advantage of this at by attacking in a way that avoids your opponent's shield counter Use the C attack against your opponent when they shield for a shield counter then try fighting back with B plus C. Okay So I just have to I'll get I'll get the shield canceling down a little bit more with some practice I'm sure it's, it's probably not as hard as I'm making it look but I have really bad execution if you perform a shield to nullify a moon skill, EX special, arc drive, last arc, force release, or invincible skill, your opponent is unable to cancel it out with a shield. So when you succeed in shielding, it's one of these actions you can definitively aim for a counterattack. Stay calm and guard when your opponent comes close to attack. Nullify EX specials with shield and use shield counter A to counterattack. Keep pressing the D button when guarding to look for an opening when you can use shield. Okay, so you get the Daigo moment, right? I didn't wait long enough. When an opponent activates force release, you get knocked away by an invincible shockwave. 
This powerful shockwave cannot be guarded against, but you can defend against it with shield. Nice. Jump attacks can be cancelled with an aerial dash, even if they are guarded. Linking into an aerial dash jump attack after being guarded lets you perform successive overhead attacks. Allow your jumping C to be guarded and link into an aerial dash jumping C. Oh! <laughs> okay, so it's like, it's like, that's met. You can do that in this game still? Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so use force release if your life gauge is low, or if you think you cannot guard through an attack, you can knock away your opponent in an invincible state and recharge your life gauge. Be careful if it leaves you wide open for attacks. Ah! Ah, how could you? Using arc drive in heat mode is a perfect chance to turn the tables. Knowing if it is better to be cautious or to go offensive is critical. Timer stops during heat mode. Okay, so that's good to know. So you can pause the timer just like in, just like before. Cool. Ah, we did it. All right, so we made it through all the regular challenges. So now we're gonna learn how to play our characters here. There's no in-game frame data in this game, is there? I don't think there is anyway. Tabby confirms there's no in-game frame data. Fighting game developers, I plead with you. <laughs> It's 2021 right now. Can we get some in-game frame data, please? 